Okay, now I want to introduce one of the more complicated and uh, kind of agonizing <laughs> aspects of uh, visual system function. Uh, this is how uh, the uh, uh, photoreceptors right, um, convert the absorption of light of particular wavelengths, right, depending on whether you're, you're talking about a specific cone cell or a rod cell, right, um, into some kind of neuronal response. And I, I've been cagey about this. I've been saying some kind of neuronal response as opposed to saying action potential firing. And that's because photoreceptors have this kind of unusual response property. Um, and again, this hark harkens back to the idea that um, you know, when, you, when you talk about neurons that are uh, at the intersection between the energies of the real world, like the environment, both external and also internal, right? Um, and the rest of the nervous system, these specific sensory neurons, like a photoreceptor, they've they've evolved very unusual, you know, uh, specific sorts of um, mechanisms, right, um, for detecting the particular form of energy they're they're good at, right, that they're, they're able to detect, right. So, you know, for example, other like hair cells we'll talk about in the ear do not express any photopigments, right. So um, there are some aspects of normal neuron function that are slightly adjusted when we talk about sensory neurons, right? And that's very true in the case of photoreceptors. So let me, let's go through this carefully. The process by which light is absorbed by the pigment in the photoreceptor, right, and converted into some form of neuronal response is called phototransduction, right? We're transducing the stimulus, and the stimulus is the photon of light, right? And the very strange thing about photoreceptors is that they are actually firing, they're actually releasing neurotransmitter, you know, regularly, 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 when there is no light, okay? This is actually referred to um, as the paradoxical dark current. They carry current and release, you know, uh, neurotransmitter. These are the photoreceptors. These fire, you know, have uh, carry currents and release, release neurotransmitter in the dark, not in the light. In fact, light shuts them down. <laughs> <laughs> now, you don't want too much light. If you shut all of them down, it's just like you can't see anything at all. So there's going to be some firing and some not when you're looking around and seeing a very, you know, interesting and varied visual world, right? But phototransduction, uh, it's an odd thing. Photoreceptors actually um, will uh, fire when there's no light, and when they absorb that pigment, they actually stop releasing neurotransmitter. That's a very paradoxical kinds of situation. So... This, let's see how this works. So, photoreceptors, like I suggest, are you know sensory cells. They're odd. They actually express different genes than other neurons, right? And and there's a particular gene that's expressed in your photoreceptors. Um, you know, certainly they're genes for the the production of the actual pigments that can absorb the light, right? But in addition, there's a special channel. It's a special um, sodium channel. It's sort of shown over here in the dark side, right? When and it's open. So. Imagine our typical neuron, you know, at its resting potential of minus 65. Partly that's maintained because, you know, the neuron's not very permeable to sodium, right? It has very few of those leakage channels that we discussed earlier in the class, right? Um, but this um, photoreceptor actually expresses more open sodium channels when it's dark, right? I mean, they're, they're expressed all the time, but they're open in the dark. Um, so you have a membrane of this photoreceptor that's much more permeable to sodium you know, when it's, you know, quote, quote, at rest, right? Uh, and so if you have, a, have more permeability to sodium, remember we have um, sodium massed outside the cell, right, that it wants to come in, you know, because of the concentration gradient force and also the electrical force. If you give it more opportunity to come in, more open channels, it will come in. And as it does so, it will depolarize the cell, right? So the the neuron, the the, the sorry, the photoreceptors are unusual in that they actually uh, maintain this kind of uh, sort of inward sodium flow. Like there's more sodium coming in, in uh, than there is in a normal neuron, so they have a more depolarized uh, resting potential. It's actually below the level, uh, you know, for the opening of the the voltage gated um, calcium channels, right? So it's it's below minus 55. Uh, so there is, you know, constant influx of calcium and release of neurotransmitter um, when, you know, when the, the cell's not received any, uh, uh, you know, photons of light. Nothing, when, in the dark, it fires because it expresses this additional uh, so, uh, sodium channel. So it's more permeable to sodium. 
So its resting potential, quote, quote, is actually far more depolarized than that of a typical neuron. So it's firing consistently in the dark. Now, let's see what happens when you get light. So when light strikes, this is one of those membranous disks at the back of this photoreceptor, right? It gets absorbed by this um, pigment, right? And the absorption of, of, the, of the photon of light by the pigment, will, that's, there's gonna be a conversion of energy here, right? It's gonna cause a change in the shape and the movement of that pigment. So there's a kinetic sort of response and a structural sort of response to the absorption of light, right? Well, when that happens, something gets activated, right? There's like another messenger that gets released, right? And there's a, there's a bit of a biochemical cascade involved here. We're not gonna go into huge detail on all the steps, but the, the upshot is something is gonna come over and bind to that special, you know, sodium channel that's only found in these photoreceptors and it's going to cause it to close, to gate, okay? And when it does so, well, then the, the membrane potential goes to being sort of a normal neuron, right? It, it sort of, it'll rise above that minus 55 threshold value and, you know, head to the rest, to a normal resting potential closer to minus 65. And then the, the release of neurotransmitter will end, okay? So that's... Um, that's the initiation of sort of the neuronal response. Uh, and it's unusual in that um, these photoreceptors actually fire when there is no energy that they're sort of designed to detect, right? When there's no light in the dark, they have this paradoxical dark current and they're releasing neurotransmitter all the time, right? But in the light, the light strikes the pigment, the pigment changes shape, it releases something which then goes off and activates other things as a chemical cascade. And then there's the closing of those channels a return to a normal kind of resting potential of minus 65 or so, um, and then um, the neuron quits firing um, in the light.